So given this triangle, let's see if we can figure out if it's front facing or back facing. We already know it's front facing, but I want to show you how the hardware calculates whether it's front facing or not. You know this is vertex zero right here, vertex one, vertex two. Let's actually put the positions of the vertices here. This is zero on the X, one on the Y. This is negative one on the X, negative one on the Y. And this is one on the X, negative one on the Y. Hopefully that is, oh, that was terrible. Hopefully that knowledge is old hat to you. We've covered that in several videos, how these are normalized device coordinates. I'll even draw it here. This is roughly the x-axis. The y-axis is vertical here. Oh, that's a terrible x-axis. <laughs> negative 1 on the x, 1 on the x, 1 on the y, negative 1 on the y. Don't blink. Our axes are now gone. Now, what the, the algorithm that the hardware uses to figure out whether this is a front-facing or back-facing triangle is known as the shoelace algorithm, and I'll describe why it's the shoelace algorithm in a minute. You can Google shoelace algorithm. There's some resources out there, or the shoelace formula, so to say. But the idea is we take all these vertex positions, for example, 0, 1, negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1. We have to take the vertices in the order that we send them to the graphics card. Remember we said render from 0, 1, 2, but in the last video I reversed that and you saw how the triangles did not render. So we'll take this vertex first. I'll say 0, 1. The next one is negative 1, negative 1. The next one is 1, negative 1. And then to complete our triangle or our polygon in this case, I have to put the first vertex again. So that'll be 0, one, you can imagine we walk from 0, 1 to negative 1, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 1. Then we go from negative 1, 1 to 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1 to 1, negative 1. And then we go back from 1, negative 1 to 0, 1. And so here are all of our vertices. Now this is where the shoelace part comes in. We have to connect these. We have to do some calculations with this vertex data. And we do it like a shoelace. We take 0 times 1 and subtract negative 1 times 1. And then we take negative 1 times negative 1 and subtract 1 times negative 1. And then we take 1 times 1 and subtract 0 times negative 1. So you can kind of see the shoelace pattern in here. It almost looks like shoelaces. Let's, let's actually do the math here. I have 0 times negative 1 is a 0. And then we subtract negative 1 times 1 will be a negative 1, so we're going to subtract a negative 1. And then going to the next group, we add the next group in. So here's one level of the shoelace. This is 0 times negative 1 minus negative 1 times 1. Then we're going to add in the next group. The next group being negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Subtract 1 times negative 1 will give us another negative 1. Yeah, that's our second group. And then again, we add, let's do the third group. I'll do it on the next line. We will add 1 times 1 is 1. Subtract 0 times negative 1 is 0, like so. And if we collapse this, 0 minus negative, this will obviously be a 1. Let me erase all this. This turns into a 1. 1 minus negative 1, that turns into a 2. So I'll erase all that and collapse that down to a two and then one minus zero that's uh that's just one okay so one plus two plus one makes four the area of this triangle is four now the more most important part is the sign of this area we don't really care what the area is we just care that the area is positive but i'll just drop this up here positive four for now throw that up there and let's let's change the winding order up and to change the winding order up we simply need to reverse two of the vertices and I think the easiest thing would be to reverse or swap these two vertices because then we don't have to worry about changing up our endpoints so I'll make this one down here and negative one negative one meaning negative one to one I'm taking this vertex here putting it down here so that'll be a negative one negative one and then this one will be a positive one negative one. I'll take this positive one, negative one, move it up. So let's do the negative right here and the positive right here. Oh, eraser. 
positive right there. We just swapped those two vertices. Let's run the shoelace algorithm again, but I'm going to take some mathematical shortcuts. 0 times negative 1 is 0. Subtract 1 times 1 is 1. And then we shall add the next group of shoelaces. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And then we'll subtract negative 1 times negative 1, which is a positive 1. And then here we'll add negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Subtract 0. I guess I didn't really take many mathematical shortcuts there. But subtract 0 times negative 1 is a 0. Collapse all this. We get negative 1. And this is negative 2. And this is negative 1. Let's add all that together. And we get negative 1 plus negative 2 plus negative 1 is negative 4. Okay, before we had positive 4, now we get a negative 4. And like I said, the hardware is only concerned about the sign of the value. It doesn't really care about the value itself. If the sign is negative, that means that the triangle is facing away from us. The back of the triangle is facing towards the screen. But if the sign is positive, then, then we know that the triangle is facing the screen. We need to render all the fragments inside of the triangle. So using the shoelace algorithm, we can determine the way that the triangle faces. We still get an area. Now, if you're calculating the area of a polygon, you always take the absolute value of the result. Notice we got 4 in both cases. One just happened to be negative, but the area of that triangle is 4. However, something I happen to neglect, the area is not 4. We have to divide the results by 2. So positive 4 divided by 2 is 2. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So the actual area of the triangle is 2. We just happen to take the absolute value of that because a negative result just means the triangle's facing away. It doesn't matter if the triangle's facing us or away from us. The area is 2. But as far as the hardware is concerned, the hardware only cares about the sign. If the sign is negative, then the triangle's facing away. If the sign is positive, the triangle is facing towards us. Let me show you some cool resources I found. If you Google shoelace algorithm, you'll find a lot of people actually implementing it and doing the exact same thing I just did on video. But these resources I found here I'll take it to the next step and show you why this works. In fact, this works for any arbitrary polygon. It doesn't necessarily have to be a triangle. Just in OpenGL, we draw triangles, but it can definitely be an arbitrary polygon here. And that's the idea. You just combine the components in that shoelace way, and then you divide by two, and that gives you the area of this polygon. In fact, they have this cool interactive tool. Let me show you the URL here, mathopenref.com slash chordpolygonarea.html. I encourage you to play with this. But what's cool is I can move these around. You see as I move these around, the values over here update. They do the shoelace algorithm. They show you all the numbers here. And notice they take the absolute value to get the area. Again, we're not worried about the absolute value. In fact, we're not even worried about the divide by 2 in the end. We're just worried about the sign, the sign indicating whether the triangle is facing the camera or not. But they have this cool tool here, and they take you to the, uh, through the algorithm. And then on another page here, again, mathopenrep.com slash chordpolygonarea2.html, they actually show you why this algorithm works and how, well, here's some JavaScript to do it. But essentially, we're adding in volumes here and subtracting volumes away. And they walk you through and talk why that works. I encourage you to read this. I'm not going to cover it here, but it's an interesting algorithm. I wish I was smart enough to come with, up with this. It's, it's tricky. Google shoelace algorithm, and you'll see. But that's how the hardware determines whether a triangle is facing the camera or not and whether or not that triangle will be cold, thus saving many, many fragment computations that we don't need to do.